There was a Codename Kids Next Door video game? You bet there was. There's a couple actually, but today we are looking into the home console video game, Codename Kids Next Door Operation Video Game, which yes, does stand for something. Villains in detention escape outpost growing amalgamation mega enormously. If that's not one heck of a name, then I don't know what is. As a big fan of the cartoons I grew up with, I love getting a chance to look back on the video game side of things. And while Codename Kids Next Door didn't have a large abundance of video games produced in conjunction with the series, at least we got this game here on a generation of consoles that really pushed 3D graphics, offering a new way to experience the 2D worlds of the cartoons they stem from. So let's take a look back at Operation Video Game, what it was all about, if it was able to capture the magic that the cartoon had, and if it still holds up all these years later. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double Fringe Miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm going to give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two Fringe Misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. It's just cool to get games based on cartoon properties because you get to explore the areas in the show that you already feel familiar with, and here, it feels like you are instantly in the world of the show, and it doesn't miss a beat in really immersing you here. It's a platformer, a shooter, a shmup. It blends it all together in a fun way that gives you every member that you know and love a chance to shine while you play as them. The levels are split to give you time with each of them, and for the most part, numbers 1, 3, 4, and 5 all feel a bit similar as they are your most standard platforming characters you play as each having their own unique abilities to make them feel and play a bit different, while number two is left for piloting the cool bus for the shmup levels. It all makes it feel more authentic to the show as well, having the voice actors actually be the voice actors. It just adds a nice touch to it all, where they feel just like they do in the show from the mannerisms and dialogue. There are so many references and callbacks to the show itself, so if you were, or let's be honest, still a fan, there is so much to love here that you enjoy based on just that. There was a level of respect and detail that went into trying to make this game feel as connected to the show you love rather than just spitting out a game for the heck of it. There's collectibles, unlockables, really cool and interesting gameplay modes that let you play as the bad guys. It's a level of extra stuff in game that we just don't get anymore I feel. And it was part of the larger tie-in of the property thanks to stuff like the card game that was out for KND where you'd get cheat codes within those products that could be used in the game. And hey look, the video game even came with a trading card as well. And I'm always a sucker for when a game does this. So just in general, there's a lot of good here that makes me feel both nostalgic for this time period, and it really captures what the era was all about for cartoon-based video games. But let's get into what the heck the game is even about. What happens in the game throughout the many operations you go on? Play as your favorite operative. Collect cool weapons. Codename Kids Next Door Operation Video Game in Stores. Rated everyone 10 and up. The story starts off with the KND playing a video game, naturally. That just makes sense. And number two is ready to give number one a helmet that can be used for training, sending you into a training simulation to help prepare for fighting, getting you into the controls for the game itself. Before number one is able to get into a simulation, the Toilinator strikes and ties the rest of the team up, leading to number one thinking that this is all in his simulation that is being projected by his helmet rather than it being a real thing. So after defeating what he thinks is a simulated version of the Toilinator, he tosses him out the window, frees his team, and then number 86 reports in that several of the KND's most dangerous villains have broken out of the Kids Next Door Arctic Base prison, requesting for backup from the group here, as we now must capture them all as every other sector had been at the beach on vacation, so that's great. Get ready for the rogues gallery to be on display here in this game, as the first villain the team must take on is Grandma Stuffem, who not only has control over the Sprinkle Puff Donut Shop, filling the donut with liver and spinach and hey, don't knock it till you try it. But after number one manages to take care of Grandma Stuffum, he receives a call from number four reporting that the treehouse has been covered in snot, leading number one to connect the dots that the common cold has invaded the treehouse and makes his way back there. But as this is all going on in the background, a mysterious person is seen ramping up their mysterious background plot. When number one arrives back at the treehouse, number five finds that the common cold has hacked into their security system and turned the defenses against her, trapping number four 
floor in the meantime. Number 5 makes her way through the snot-covered treehouse trying to shut down the defense grid and free Number 4, and after successfully shutting down the defense grid and freeing him, the common cold reveals himself piloting his new aircraft to the team and begins an attempt to try and make an escape, which then brings in Number 2 who chases him down with the new and improved KND cool bus. After taking down the common cold and his snot bomber, we get a glimpse of the same mysterious person once again doing their potentially evil doings, and this will become a common theme happening throughout the game that we will see. Number 4 now desperately has to use the bathroom, but all of the toilets are still clogged with snot, opting to have to use the toilet we never use. Hey, we've all been there, right? Then when the power suddenly goes out, Count Spankulot manages to break into the treehouse and transform all of the other members of KND into spank-happy vampires, leaving it to the backed-up number four to have to defeat them and return them all back to normal. After the other team members come back to their senses, they now have to catch all the hamsters that they used to power the treehouse that escaped to now fully restore the power. And since the majority of the team are now tired from their recent brawl, who else would be better for this than number three? And after she does so, the full power is restored to the treehouse and number one heads out to capture Count Spankulot, freeing children throughout the neighborhood and defeating Count Spankulot's minions, bringing you into a final confrontation with the Count to take him down. After this, you get a report from number 86 informing you that Sticky Beard has been potentially spotted, so now the team is going to utilize number two's tarpoon as a means to anchor a rope onto his ship so that number five can board it and capture Sticky Beard. But things quickly changed when number four spotted a button he's never seen before, causing him to obviously press the button letting those intrusive thoughts win, and doing so launches the tarpoon and gets it stuck in the treehouse, making number two now having to find spare parts to build a new one. Meanwhile, we see the same mysterious person from before, being praised by Father, the end-all be-all baddie from the series, and hear him remark that the kids next door would be no more, ending with the evil laughter, as he naturally would. It's on brand, and we respect him for that. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Hi, this is just your reminder that if you really need to pick me up during the day, and something that tastes great and is also not the worst thing in the world for you because there's literally nothing in it. There's nothing in it, except for great flavor. There's less than a calorie per serving. There's no sugars. And if you use my code FRINGE, you get 10% off. This holiday season, treat yourself right with gamer subs. After number two has finished building a new tarpoon, it's fired at Sticky Beard's ship, allowing number five to hop aboard. And after defeating pirates and making it to the candy treasure room that Flapjack would go crazy for, she's confronted by Sticky Beard for a fight. And once you do defeat him, that mysterious person appears and reveals themselves to be none other than number five's older sister, Cree, proceeding to trap number five literally under Sticky Beard, taking his candy cane peg leg and leaving. Seriously, this game really feels like a long special series of interconnected episodes having the vibe of the show nailed down to a T. Later that night, number 86 sends in a report informing us that another one of their villains, Night Brace, is collecting fireflies for his new glow-in-the-dark toothpaste, Bug Bright. Four to five dentists recommend it. Number three volunteers to look around the neighborhood for fireflies, which again, seems like the perfect mission for her, and she eventually befriends a firefly, convincing it to gather the others to help her out and rescue the rest of the fireflies that are being held captive. After you free the remaining fireflies, they help out the KND find Night Brace's lair, where number one goes to confront Night Brace in a cavity-filled procedure of butt whooping. Yes, that was a sentence I just said. No, I will not apologize for it. After defeating Night Brace, number four reports that the Toilinator has returned to the treehouse in an attempt to flood it with sewage, trying his hand again at what he was trying to do from the beginning. Number four makes his way through the now flooded treehouse, taking out Toilinator's henchmen, making it to his room, where he puts a stop to the Toilinator sending him to the cool bus with the rest of the captured villains. From here, the KND begin making their way to the moon base with all the villains to hold them there until they can find a better place than the prison they broke out of, and on their way to it, they are intercepted by the delightful children from down the lane in their new moon-sized mobile mega mansion. We get it. You're rich. After the KND take care of the delightful children from down the lane and finally make it to the moon, Father reveals that this is what he had planned for all along, with the objective of bringing all the villains together in one place, so that he could use his new machine, the Amalgamator, to shoot out a beam that merges all of them into a monster referred to as the Amalgamation. How very clever there, buddy. Its purpose is to destroy the KND's moon base, leading to the mobile mega mansion greatly damaging the cool bus, forcing the team to abandon ship and retreat into the moon base to prepare to defend it as Father teleports the amalgamation there as well, to which it begins to attack it. The KND quickly get the moon base's emergency defense systems up and going, which almost led to number four activating the self-destruct button, and thankfully, number five had predicted this and had the labels secretly swapped ahead of time. That's smart thinking. Now, the moon base transforms into the Trahemoth, which leads to the showdown 
down against Amalgamation on the moon. After this fight and the defeat of Amalgamation, it causes an explosion which unmerges the villains, sending them blasting off. Later on, inside the moon base, the team are awarded medals by number 86, but after this, it's immediately revealed that the entire adventure itself was just a video game they had been playing all along, with number one reminding the team that they need to be ready for anything that may happen. And after this, the Toilinator arrives at the treehouse just as he did at the beginning of the game, which suggests that the events of the game are perhaps about to repeat themselves in reality. A nice wraparound to make the game feel a lot longer than it actually is. Seriously, it's like under five hours long, but at least it was a solid time nonetheless. To me, this is a game that absolutely understands its source material, a game that celebrates the fandom by delivering a gaming experience that feels just like the show. That doesn't mean it didn't come with its issues that led to the game getting some mixed to mediocre reviews when it came out. With a lot of the games from around this time and the generation beforehand navigating a 3D landscape, having some things feeling a bit clunky if the camera itself has its own set of problems. But despite this, I really think that there is a lot to love here. It opens itself for multiple playthroughs, it respects you as a fan, and especially if you got this game back in the day at a budgeted price, it's completely worth it. Today, there really is no excuse. If you've never played it or want to replay it after nearly two decades since it was released, then I think you'd have a pretty great time. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on Codename Kids Next Door Operation Video Game are. Did you really enjoy what it had to offer, or were you disappointed as a fan of the show? I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later. Thank you.